Hey guys, this is Aaron, and today I want to look at something that is the answer to a question we hear a lot, and that is about changing properties of items or viewing properties of items, square footages, uh, lengths of lines, that sort of thing. So we're going to take a look at how to do that. And uh, the way to do that is the Entity Info window. Looks a little something like this when there's nothing selected. Uh, to make sure you have the Entity Info window visible, you want to go to Windows and make sure there's a little check next to Entity Info. That's the basics. Now let's hop in here and see how this works. So the information displayed in the Entity Info window is going to change depending on what's selected. So if I come in here and select a line, I'm going to get basic information like what layer it's on, what the length of that line is, and then I have some options here to soften and smooth the lines, toggle the visibility. If I poke in this eyeball, I would actually turn it off so I can hide it so I can't see it. And then there's a couple grayed out icons. I can't use those, but I can use this last one, which is casts shadow. So I can toggle on or off whether or not it's going to cast a shadow. So that's all I get for a line. If I have a surface selected, I get a different set of information. In this case, I get a layer. I get a square foot measurement. In this case, my settings are set to feet, so it is feet squared. That's what I see here rather than meter squared or something like that. Uh, and then I have different options here for my toggles. You see soften and smooth one way. I can't soften and smooth the surface. I only soften and smooth the edges between surfaces. I can toggle visibility on and off. I can choose not only whether it casts shadow, but also if it receives a shadow. I also have two options here for the faces. What is the front and back face colors? I can actually toggle that here, or change that here as well. Um, you'll notice something, something that changes. A lot of people do this. They come in here and they want to see things like they want to see the square footage of something. To see the square footage of a surface, you have to have just that face selected. If I come in here and double click so I get my face and the edges around it highlighted, you can see up here what shows up is five entities and I don't get a square footage anymore. This is a, something that people run into a lot. If I want to see a square footage of surfaces, I can only have surfaces selected, only faces. Anything else is selected. So if I have a single edge, then I no longer have a square footage. The other thing is cubic footage. So here I have a closed shape. This is a box. Um, if I triple click it, it will all light up. But you'll notice I don't get a cubic footage here. This is a closed volume, but it does not give me cubic footage. Because right now, this is still raw geometry. In order to see the cubic footage of something, I do have to put it inside a container. That means right clicking and making it a group or a component. You see, as soon as I make it a group, up in the entity info, I get solid group. And it does come up and tell me the volume of that group. So that's an important thing, too. If you want to see the cubic size of something, the volume of an entity, it does have to be inside of a group. Something else you'll notice is advanced attributes. This is only going to be available if this is actually a component. So if I make this into a component, then all of a sudden my advanced attributes become available and I can put that information in there. The other thing that's only option here, my instance or my definition name, this is only going to show up on uh, components or groups too. I don't have the ability to take individual surfaces and give them an instance name or anything like that. It only will apply that to containers. All right, so that's the basics. So let's look at some of the information you can view and modify using the Entity Info box. The first thing is edge length. If I select an edge, I showed before we can toggle this information off, but I can also select and change that length. So if I want to make that bigger, I'll go to 20 foot and that's going to get longer. It does change the length based on the direction it was originally drawn in. This, this line did start here and was drawn this direction. So as I change that length, change it back down to say 5 foot, it's going to change based on that single start point that I started with. The next thing to look at here is an arc. So with arc, I have a couple things here. I have a radius, segments, and a length. This length, despite being a text box, is not editable text. Can you hear that exaggerated key tapping that I'm doing? That is to show that you can't actually modify this. This, is, this length is a sum of the radius and the original length between the two points. I can, however, come here and change my segments. So I can drop this down to 6, give me a, a coarser arc, as opposed to taking it up to like 24, which is giving me a smoother arc. And I can change the radius. 
So the smaller the radius, the bigger the bulge. If I go with a larger radius, that means the focal point's moving out, and I'll end up with less defined a bulge. So that is the information I can change inside of an arc. An important point here is that I cannot, once this is modified, so if I come in here and I right click and I say explode that curve, this is no longer an arc. See, my options to change that went away. I now have a bunch of segments. So I can't actually grab this and change my arc information because it is no longer recognized by SketchUp as an arc. The next entity type to look at is a polygon. If I pick on the face of a polygon, it's just going to come up and tell me I have a face and give me the square footage. If I want to actually see the value of the shape, I need to pick the line on the outside. So here I can see I have a radius, so that's from the center to the point, that is five feet right now, and number of segments. This is obviously a five-sided shape. I can come in here and I can change this number to increase or decrease. I can also change this value to make that bigger or smaller. Again, just like on the other ones, I cannot come in and change this. Exaggerated clicks again. I can't modify that. That is just a summary of the total length of these lines around the outside of the polygon. Um, Similarly, if I was to come in here and explode that curve, again, just like we saw in the arc, I now no longer have uh, a polygon, but just a bunch of lines. Circles work almost exactly the same way. Select the surface, no information, just my square footage. Select the outside the line, and I get number of segments and radius. So this is kind of nice, because this is some place that I can actually come in here and I can increase, a lot of people ask about increasing circle uh, smoothness for things like 3D printing, and that's where you can do that. So if I do draw a circle at the standard default of 24 and I wanna make it smoother, I can select it and make that change. Now something to be aware of, I'm gonna drop this back down to 24 real quick. Once this changes, so if I grab this circle now and I push pull it up, I grab this right here. Notice my segments is now grayed out. I can't even enter, I can't change that. I can, however, come in and change my radius. So I can make this uh, bigger, but what I can't do is I can't change the number of sides on the circle once that uh, there's other geometry collected to it like this. Um, once those kind of changes get made, I am stuck with the number of sides I have. As long as I don't explode the arc, however, I can use the radius to make the change. Same thing happens in polygons, same functionality. Uh, once I do something like push, pull, or add geometry to it, I can change the radius, but not modify number of segments at that point. All right, so a couple more things that I can change with the entity info box. One is sections. So as of 2018 and newer versions. Um, I have a call out here. This call out is established when you actually draw the section initially, but I can come in at any time, select that, that section cut, and I can change that symbol. So if I want to make it 100, I can change that right there. I can also change the section name. This is what it will be called by over in the outliner once that's turned on. So I can make those changes. I'm not stuck with that once that's initially drawn in. And finally, I can change text. Well, I change text by double clicking on text and typing new text. But if I select text or dimensions, I can come in here and I can change the font. So I can click the font button. That's going to give me my font selection dialog, where I can come in here and I can choose uh, a different font or maybe make it bigger or smaller uh, so it's a little easier to see on my screen. So that is it. Those are all the changes, all the information you can view or modify using the entity info box. So hopefully that helps you out if you ever come across a situation where you need to change the properties of a thing inside of SketchUp. So how'd that work out for you? Did you like it? Did it help you out? If so, let us know, give us a like, or maybe even subscribe down below. If you have an idea for something that you think would make a good skill builder, leave us a comment and let us know about that too like making these videos, but I like making them a lot better when there's something you want to see. Thank you.